Shalom, Yasharala. Giving all praise and glory to the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For everything he's worthy to be praised for everything. You know, I want to, uh, as always, we're going to go to Colossians 3.17. And whatsoever you do, in word or deed, do all. By Hashem, O Mashiach, I was shy. Give me thanks to the most high and the father. By Hashem, O Mashiach, Yahweh shy. So, everything that we say and do is going to be in the name of the Lord and Savior. He said, no man come to the father but by me. In St. John 14 and 6. And there is no New Testament when he's saying that he only had the law and the prophets of Mashiach Yahweh Shai, the world called Jesus Christ. But I read in uh, Acts 26 and 14 when he met Saul on the road to Damascus, he spoke in the Hebrew tongue. So if he spoke in the Hebrew tongue, like I speak in English, and generally us that speak in English, we have an English name. Those that speak Spanish have somewhat of a Spanish name. You see what I'm saying? But, uh, or whatever language, you know, see what I'm saying? So, I want to look at 2nd Ezra 16. And I want to look at verse 19. It's a future prophecy that the Mosiah showed Ezra. Remember, the Mosiah gave Ezra's, he gave Ezra 204 books. 204 books. We only have 80. And some that's only dealing with the revived version only have 66. 66 books. Because they don't they're not really dealing with topographer. So they don't even have those books. You see? So this is the Apocrypha 14 books that the Protestants took out of the Bible. So you have the 66 and the 14, you have 80 books. So Ezra was given 204 books. So that's 124 more books than what the average person has. So he's giving him prophecy right now. Pay attention. Because we can see this happening in our day now, in these last days. And it says, behold, famine. This is 2nd Ezra 16, chapter, verse 19. It said, Behold, famine, food shortage, and plague. Tribulation. Plagues is all these diseases, and like you see all these diseases that's happening right now, that you know the main thing that's going on now, that I really can't say they say, so this is medical. <laughs> But you know what I'm talking about. It says tribulation. It's a lot of hell going on. And anguish. People getting angry. Walking around with an attitude. Are sent as gorgeous. You hear that? Are sent by the Most High as gorgeous. For amendment. Get it right. The scourges is a holy, for less a word, butt whooping. From the Most High. A holy butt whipping from the Most High. They're sent for amendments for us to get it right. But you know how we are. The Most High tear our butts up, then we be all crying to the Most High, then no little time go by, then we back to that wickedness that we was doing in the first place. That's why these players going to come. Especially on us that he thought enough to be laboring to make us perfect. You're going to start with the elders down to the youngest, down to little children. This is what it says. And here it is right here. But for all these things, this holy butt whipping that he's putting on us, as you see us being killed, the verdict is not guilty, which is written in. Zechariah 11 and 5. These diseases that he have on the earth. That's uncurable. That people rolling around with. And I wonder if they tell anybody that they have them. Before they get with them. Or the ones that have them get together. Because they all know they got the same kind of disease. Get together on that. Question. You know. Who knows. I mean. It says. For all these things. 
They shall not turn from their wickedness. Mosai jacking us, giving us that holy butt whipping. And what are people? Like I said, they're in pain, they're suffering. Why? Mosai the one that wound. And all those things, they still don't turn from their wickedness. Exclude the Mosai out of wounding them, bringing forth the pain, the suffering, the tribulation, the hell. And their minds being detoured from him through the deceit of the world, of those that's in the world that perpetrating the fraud. And they think it's cool. They think everything is okay because nobody see me, but the Most High's eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun, beholding all the ways of men. And he's long suffering. I mean, he suffered long. But he tell you. <laughs> He tells you, boy, and see, we can point the finger at someone if we want to, some other nation, but it start with us first. We got to deal with ourselves as Israelites. Because when you go to these laws, he ain't talking to nobody but us. He ain't talking to everybody. He's talking about us, what we're doing, you see. And we try and find a way to exclude ourselves and look at someone else, always, you see? And he's not gonna quit the wicked. That's what he said, he's not gonna quit the wicked. That's why he said, uh, go to um, first and foremost, Galatians 6 and 7, and Colossians three seventeen. This holy whipping that he's putting on us, and people don't realize, dang, it's the most high. He said, Be not deceived, the most high is not mocked. See, the most high is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, whatever you do, that shall he also reap. So, you want to sin against the most high's rules and regulations, his law, statute, and commandments. And think it's okay because now you are uh you became a Christian, but you are Israelite, but you still got this Christian type mindset, and you think that you could do whatever you want to do. There's no law. In your mind, when you're doing the things that's wrong, you ain't thinking about the most high. So therefore, he is going to visit you. As I said, that's what I said. Look, look. Be not deceived. Don't allow the devil to continue to fool you. <laughs> That's in God in someone or in you. And it's in someone else and you two devils coming together thinking that the most high don't see you. Or many devils. Or the many devils that's in you. Or many spirits, that's spirits. That's in you or that's in someone else that's so powerful that he overrides you. And you're trying to be righteous and you be wicked. You turn to wickedness. Why? Because you're deceived. That's why I say, be not deceived. Don't let nobody lie to you. Don't lie to yourself. <laughs> First and foremost, Mosai is not mocked. If he thought enough of us to show us the understanding of his word, where the whole world is in darkness, gross darkness at that, the people's minds are in gross darkness, gross ignorance. Or hand them the Bible and say, talk to me. Then we'll see. Because that's how we know the most high is through with his word. He said, be not deceived. Don't be lied to. Don't let nobody lie to you. The most high is not mocked. The most high is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You want to you wanna sow sin? You want to sow? Uh, that's what we're reading about these plagues. You want to sow sin? That's what you're going to get. That's why for he that soweth to his flesh, that's key. You're going to sow to your flesh when he already said in chapter 5, verse uh, 16, this I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's why he's saying for he that soweth to his flesh shall, in verse 8, 
of Galatians 6 and 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Corruption. That's why he's saying, walk in the spirit. You're walking in the spirit. You're thinking about the most high. Thinking about what he's saying. Separating yourself from sin and those that will commit sin or do something that the spirit tells you, no, don't do it. Then you follow the spirit and it says, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, right? Let's see what the flesh is. That's why he's saying, for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Let's see. For the flesh, verse 17 of verse 5, he already told us this. For the flesh lust is against the spirit. So that's a war. That's a battle. It's a battle. The flesh lusts against the spirit. And you look at you look at this as also the world. That's why I go to um, James 4 and 4. We're going to deal with it spiritually, okay? You adulterers and adulteresses. You adulterers that's going against the Most High Spirit and following your flesh and sin, men and women. Spiritual adultery. Spiritual adulterers, men, and spiritual adulteresses, women, that are sown to the flesh, he says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world, the friendship of the world which lie in following the flesh, you see, is enmity with the Most High. Makes you at war with the Most High. Whosoever therefore be, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of the Most High. So if you are a friend of your flesh and not the spirit of the Most High, we're supposed to be guiding you into all truth and into everlasting life, then you're the enemy of the Most High. Going back to the flesh. Galatians 5, 17. For the flesh lusts against the spirit. So that's why these plagues are coming. Because the flesh is lusting against the spirit. You're lusting against the Most High's rules and regulations. That's the spirit. You see? His law, and commandments, being obedience to him. And the spirit against the flesh. So the spirit, those that are in the spirit, got to fight against the flesh. Trust me, we all have to deal with this. I'm not excluded. Nobody's excluded from this. We all got to deal with this. You know, you have all kinds of things coming at you when you when you in the spirit. Over and over again. Trying to test you, trying to tempt you, trying to deceive you to go to hell with them. No matter what it is. You know, if it was about just being uh, overly rich, that could have happened a long time ago. It could have happened over and over again. If it's just about money, if it's just about pleasure, that could happen over and over and over and over again. That's what the world is set up on, to represent. And the older you get, the more you have to choose from. Hmm, how about that? So you have to fight against the flesh with the spirit of the Most High. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. They're contrary. They're at war with each other. You got the world and the spirit. Being an Israelite and being a, a worldly Israelite with a Gentile mind. On this day, I'm, the, I'm a Gentile. It don't make no difference you're Israelite if you act like a Gentile. Gentile says, hey, this, this, is, this is beautiful for you. This feel good. Oh, I feel good. So now you feel good. Now the judgment come. The earth is opened up. You swallowed up. Or a tornado come. Boom, you, you done away. Just what the most I say he's going to do. He said, you're hearing these plagues, this butt whipping, this holy butt whipping that he's putting on people. Ain't going to put on people. More and more and more. It's going to escalate. He said it's going to be like a woman in travail. A woman having a baby. You're going to see these things happen. Quicker than you can even imagine. Are you ready for them? This is what it says. So the spirit is warring against the flesh. And these are contrary to the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that you would. You can't do what you're supposed to do. Because you're rolling in the wrong spirit. Listen. But if ye be led of the spirit. 
You are not under the law. You're not under the law. Because the Spirit going to tell you to keep the most highest commandments. No, I can't do that. Nah, go ahead and do that. Go ahead and, have, go ahead and do whatever you're going to do. I'm going to be over here dealing with what I got to deal with. And thus say the most high. Because you know what he says do. You just study to show yourself approved, yourself approved to him. To know what's right from wrong. And say, no, I don't want to do that. Because the first thing that comes to your mind is the spirit generally. If you're in the spirit, right? You say, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not involved. I'm not going to do that. You don't reach the judgment of the most high that other people can reach. Happen to them, they happen to you because you say, no, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going with that. So it could be, but if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Remember it said, we hear because it says, uh, Galatians 6 and 8, he already told us this. Well, we're getting ready to read. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. That corruption being dealt with. <laughs> like he said, he's this holy butt whipping. And hopefully that'll change you. But you heard what he said. All these things that he's doing to us, we ain't going to take it into account. We're going to forget about it and go back to the wickedness. Shame, shame, shame. Galatians 5, 19, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery. First thing he says, adultery. Same thing he said in James 4 and 4. A man have a wife, and the wife go out and sleep with another man, or other men. And a woman have a husband, and he going out there dealing with some other married woman. These are the things that we do, and have done, and still doing. First thing he names is adultery. And I want you to look up all these words. Fornication, I, I dealt with a lesson on adultery, fornication, mostly all these things that this applies to this. And adultery and fornication, whores and all these things. Look up that lesson and go over it. Fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings. Murderers, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of the Most High. That's clear. But the fruit of the Spirit, remember the Spirit is worn against the flesh, is love. So love is to keep it of the Most High's commandments. Second John and six. Second John and six. Six verse. And this is love. That we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as he ye have heard from the beginning, ye shall you should walk in it. Keep it the most high's commandment. That's love. The first thing he say, the fruits of the spirit is love. And love is the keeping of the commandments. In the New Testament that you see, and the definition definition of sin is what? In the New Testament, first John three and four. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is a transgression of the law. So if you are in the spirit, the first thing it says, the fruits of the spirit is what? Love. You keep the commandments, you're not under the law because you're going to follow the law. So you ain't got to be judged by the law because you're going to follow what the most high says to do. This is real simple. And it's, he said, 1 John 5 and 3 says, For this is the love of the most high that we keep his commandments, and commandments are not grievous. You ain't supposed to be feeling a certain way because of uh, doing what's right in the eyes of the most high. It's supposed to be wonderful, magnificent. This is what it says. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, which is keeping other commandments, joy. So when you keep the commandments, you will have joy. He said, whatever you give, you take out cheerfully. So you have joy, peace. These are the things that we want. Long suffering, the most high long suffering with us, suffering a long time with us. Our wretched, wicked butts doing the things that we want to do against him. Reproaching him, have reproached him from the beginning. We say, all you need is me, and we choose the devil. Oh, yeah. But understand and understand gentleness. This ain't all prideful and up and just want to just 
devour your people? Gentleness, gentle. Goodness, we're just keeping them both sides. Law to be good is, I mean, the law is good. Romans 7 and 12. And holy. Faith, believing in the most high. Meekness, humility, temperance, dealing with time, you know. Things might not be expedient, might come real fast, but you still have to wait. Against such, there is no law, you see? Ain't no judgment for that, doing these things. And they that are Mashiachim, which he told us in 1 Corinthians 3.23, for ye are Mashiachim. We are the Messiahs. That's how we reach the Most High through him. And he's saying these things when there is no New Testament. All he had to go by when he was here in the flesh was the law and the prophets, the Old Testament. Not challenge anybody to say he had more to go by than that when he was here in the flesh. So when y'all say that, oh, he not dealing with the law and the prophets, that's all he had to go by. That's why he couldn't destroy the law and the prophets. That's what he went by. If he didn't sin, sin is transgression of the law. Where's the law? In the Old Testament. That's all he had. When he walked over in the flesh, did he have Acts? The book of Acts, it was, it was there. Romans, Paul's writings. He was Saul when he was on the earth. He was Saul. Putting people to death. For Baha Shema Mashiach in the name of the Lord and Savior. And he was transformed. To suffer for in the name of the Lord and Savior. But he's saying, we, ye are Mashiachim in 1 Corinthians 3.23. That means we the Messiahs. And Mashiach is the Most High. Nobody approaching the Most High. So his, his brightness is too bright. But flesh and blood to approach unto him. We always had an angel that came down and dealt with us. The spirit. So I'm saying the spirit. What's the spirit? He make his spirits. He make his angel spirits. The spirits angels. Same entity. Ministers of flaming fire, bringing forth the fire is the word of the Most High. That's what they're bringing to us over and over again. But we can't see it because the first thing he said in verse 2 was the angel of the Most High of Genesis, the first chapter, the second verse. And we Israelites know in the beginning it says, in the beginning, Allah Hayyam, the powers created the heavens and the earth. And it said the spirit moved upon the waters, the spirit of the Most High. It's Salakia moved upon the waters. That's the angel of the Most High. Hamashiach Yahushai. The first creation of the Most High. The beginning of the creation of the Most High. Tells you this. Now, we as a people can get caught up in still being religious and all these things will come back to haunt us. That's why we're reading about these plagues. He said, they that are Mashiachim have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. You see? That lust is a damnable thing, boy. But it's all in the flesh. So when you in the spirit and you Mashiachim, as it says in 1 Corinthians 3.23, and ye are Mashiachim, we are the Messiahs, and a Mashiach, Yahweh is the Most High. That's why he said in St. John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the way to show you how to follow the truth, which is the laws. Psalms 119, 142, that righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. So he's the way to show us how to follow the laws, such commandments of the Most High. That's going to lead to everlasting life. No man coming to the Father but by him, he's saying. You see, so we Mashiachim. We ain't just become that, we've been that. When you gonna realize this? David realized it. A lot of y'all believe in King David. He said in Psalms 121, the most high said unto my power, a Mashiach Yahushai, sit thee on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. That's where Mashiach was at on the right hand side of the most high. It all goes together. That's why I can't understand how somebody could think that any man could put this together this Bible together and think they believe in the Most High. Come on, you better ask somebody. Going back to Galatians, the fifth chapter. 
It says, verse 25, no, the fifth chapter, verse 25, Galatians 5, 25. If we live in the spirit, if you're going to call yourself, it's a lot you. 